Hi there everyone, my name is Dave West. I hope we're all doing well. So welcome back to the ultimate video test and today I'm checking out the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Now as with all ultimate video tests, I'll leave one of the main camera specifications down in the description and I'll just run through some of the high level features throughout this video to help save you some time. So an absolute Swiss army knife of a handset, much like the S23, S22 and S21 Ultra before it, with stacks and stacks of features of which I'll be going through all of those available in its video recording mode in today's video. So this is the selfie camera and this is a 12 megapixel autofocus camera and this can record video at up to 4K at 60 frames per second. Now much like last year's S23 Ultra, you get nice, sharp, detailed video and even though it exhibits the same old clipped highlights as you can see here in the background still manages to maintain good exposure on the subject which is the whole point of a selfie camera in the first place. Now you also get Samsung's excellent electronic image stabilization. Now you can toggle this on or off for example you might want to switch it off if you're using a mechanical stabilizer like a gimbal or something like that but my recommendation is just keep it switched on because it allows you to just run and gun press record and off you go. Now one neat little trick which has been carried over from the S23 Ultra is the ability to flip between the selfie and rear cameras for in video. Now there's a little bit of a pause as it switches from the selfie to the rear cameras, but it's a really nifty little feature which means you can practically record an entire video test like this without having to drop it into an editing timeline and just upload the whole lot onto YouTube or share it wherever you like without having to stitch it all together. So for comparison then, this is 4K at 60 frames per second from the selfie camera. So quick highlight check. So looking at this between uh, the 4K 60 and 4K 30, it's not a huge amount of difference. I can see that this area of the sky here, which was previously well exposed, is now slightly overexposed. But again, subject first and foremost with the selfie camera. And you can hopefully get the benefit of the more organic movement that you get with 60 FPS video. Now sticking with the selfie camera, you also get the really excellent portrait video mode. It's very much like cinematic that like you may get on the Google Pixel. Or if you're an iPhone user, the cinematic video on that which is a slight level above this. It does a few more funky tricks in the background, but basically you're just getting nice in focus subject with a nice soft blurred background. Now, unlike when you're just recording standard video, you can't flip the cameras around when using portrait mode. It's because obviously the depth mapping is slightly different between the selfie and the rear cameras, but I don't think you're really gonna be doing it that much anyway. It's a convenience feature more than anything. But in my opinion, this looks really good. And you can change the bokeh level on the video as well. So you can have everything in focus or you can adjust the strength of the portrait video as you see fit. All right, so nothing new. This has been around on other handsets since God were a lad. But don't think other handsets can do it quite like the Galaxy S24 Ultra. So this is the split video or dual recording as it's called on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra and what this allows you to do is record from the selfie and the rear camera on the same video which is really nifty but the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra I'll stop saying it in its full sentence in a minute because it's really annoying I'd imagine is that you don't just have to use one of the rear cameras you can use the selfie and then you can use the ultra wide the main lens or the telephoto camera on the rear. Now that's a really awesome idea because sometimes you kind of get a fixed view from the main camera. There's no electronic image stabilization, which you get here. And sometimes you might, might want a wide view. You might want a selfie and they get a bit closer with the telephoto camera, or you might just want to stick to the box standard main camera and have done with it. So I'll show you very quickly. So this is currently selfie and ultra wide lens. And this is the selfie and the main 200 megapixel lens. So I'm just gonna kind of just walk around this 
part of the common. Now focus on the rock here, which will hopefully give you an idea of the different focal length or zoom length. And here's the selfie camera and the three times telephoto lens. Now the good thing is you get electronic image stabilization through both the selfie and the rear camera. Some phones can't do that. You either get one or the other, nothing at all, or just stabilization on one of the lenses. But I think it's a really nifty feature. Niche, of course, not everyone's gonna use this, but there is a use case for a lot of people out there who might want to use this. Maybe if you're at a concert, football, rugby game, or something like that, you might wanna get reaction on your face and also the action in front of you. So it's got a really good level of flexibility on this dual recording mode. And you can even do it picture in picture like this rather than side by side. And if I click the toggle button, it'll toggle between me stuck and trapped up in the little picture in picture view and then the main expanse of the field in front of me or I can just flick back and then the field is now trapped in the little picture in picture view and I am free out in the open space. So you get the idea, there's the dual recording feature. Let's switch to the rear cameras and show you what they're all about. All right then, so rear cameras. So you'll have to bear with me. This is gonna be quite a long video and I will index everything into chapters at the bottom of the screen or if you click more in the description box, this will allow you to select whichever part of the video that you like. So concentrating on 4K 30 frames per second, first of all then from the rear lenses. And there is loads to go through. So let's just go through the bread and butter lenses first of all. So this is the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. You then get the 200 megapixel main camera. Now you can toggle this in the settings. You don't actually see it out of the box, but you then get the 2X viewpoint. So this is how your eyes perceive what you're actually seeing in video and photography. Uh, it's a neat feature to have and it just gets you that little bit closer. There's no 2X lens. This is a crop of the main lens. You then get the dedicated 10 megapixel, three times telephoto camera. You then got an additional 50 megapixel, five times telephoto camera. And now instead of having the 10X zoom from the S23 Ultra, the S23 Ultra and the S21 Ultra from years past, you now get a lossless crop from the 50 megapixel five times telephoto camera are you keeping up here so what it does is very very similar to the google pixel 7 pro and 8 pro in that what it does is it crops out of the center of the lens and then zooms that in to give you pretty much a 10 times lossless zoom it's extremely clever and i was a little bit concerned when i saw the specifications on paper but i needn't have worried because as you can see the actual quality is really damn good now you can go all the way up to 20 times zoom so effectively this is a 15 times digital crop from that 50 megapixel sensor and as you can see although it's a little bit hazy in parts if you keep still I mean <laughs> I laugh but that is pretty damn good bear in mind this is a phone which fits in your pocket not an expensive DSLR lens, but even the colors up over the valley there, you got the wind farm up in the distance. Be fair, that is pretty damn impressive. And even the colors, which has been created by the sunset off to my left, is really accurately portrayed. Now you'll see the exposure is kind of wavering around a little bit. Uh, that's because I'm moving the handset. It's really hard to keep still uh, when you're in zoom like this, but you can press and hold and it will lock the exposure, which I've done now. So it saves the image from auto expose in different areas of the image. You can see everything is nice and uniform. Uh, to show you just how far these cameras can reach, let's go all the way back to the ultra wide camera 
and you can see just how much flexibility this phone has in terms of zoom. So considering this lens is getting on a bit, this 12 megapixel lens has been around for quite some time now on the, the Ultra series for the Samsung Galaxy, but it still does really well in my opinion. I don't really think there's a huge need to change this lens because you know, ultra wide is there if you just want to cram in more into the shot. You're not really bothered too much about detail because obviously you're much further away from the subject. So it's great for getting these huge expanses in here, as you can see. So let's go for a walk here to show you the video stabilization. Now the ultra wide lens does have autofocus, as you can see there. Now this also helps when using it for macro photography. So it allows you to get really close to the subject. So the ultra wide camera obviously allows you to get that much closer because it's so wide. And then it uses Samsung's processing to get you some nice close up detail on your subject for photos. So let's go to the 200 megapixel camera then. Now before I go for a little walk, let's just check out autofocus. You can see they're nice and quick to react, but instead of the autofocus mechanism just kind of snapping away, you get a nice DSLR-like smooth transition back to the background, which is really awesome. And immediately switching to this 200 megapixel camera, the detail, just looking through the viewfinder, the houses there you can just see in the center of the image up in the distance there, look really crisp on the viewfinder. I'm not sure if it's gonna relate to that on your screen, but I've recorded this in the high bitrate video option, which I would just suggest leaving on all of the time. It doesn't take with too much more space. And I'll also upload this video in the highest bitrate that I can so you can get the benefit of this video. Now, just turning towards the sun, which is on its way to set in, you can see the dynamic range from this camera is really good. Now, obviously it's compensating for the sun there, but if I just tap on different areas of the image, it will brighten those up. But I just say, let the phone do what it wants. So let's go for a wander here. Now, the difference with using the main camera in video mode is that you get optical image stabilization and electronic image stabilization. So you might have noticed it is noticeably smoother when walking. I mean, look at this, I'm almost sinking. But the phone is doing a really good job of just smoothing things out, even though I'm in danger of getting stuck in this mud. So moving forward to the 3X telephoto camera. Right, let's go for a walk. So it doesn't so matter much in video uh, that this is a 10 megapixel lens. So it's been 10 megapixel since the S21 Ultra. But obviously Samsung are improving all the time. So they keep the same lens with a different coating on it, better algorithms with the video and photo processing. But for video, it doesn't matter so much because obviously it's still 4K. And you can see here the software is doing a really good job of stabilizing the image. Now, the good thing is, is it does it all in the background and then when it's processed, it looks even smoother than what you can see in the viewfinder. So even though it's wobbling about a little bit in front of me here, when I watch this back, it'll be noticeably much smoother and just take away the slight waveriness of the camera rocking back and forth. Right, so up to five times magnification now. Now this new 50 megapixel lens is absolutely mustard. It is awesome. It is such a good addition to this handset. And it really transforms, uh, you know, how you look at photography and things like that, because if you want to take a zoom shot like this, you can then go into editing later on. You can crop in that a little bit further without losing much detail. And for video, just standing here and just looking at the van up in the distance, just off to the 
right of centre here. And even things like the rooftops, the solar panels you can see up in the distance over here. And the treetops. It, it's so good. It's just really crisp, nice looking video without being burdened with lots of over sharpening. It's really impressive. And now when you crop out to the 10x view, again, it's a noticeable improvement over the S23 Ultra. Someone asked me on a video that I uploaded recently, is it worth upgrading from the S23 to the S24 Ultra? I say yes, because the new features that have been added do really make a difference and the trade-in options you get make, make it a really good no-brainer buy in my opinion. So let's have a look at this bird then at 20x zoom. And again, you're starting to see some over sharpening of fuzziness coming into play here, but it really isn't that bad. So we've got a passing plane coming overhead. So let's see, let's just go back here to the ultra wide lens. Let's just frame it. There it is. And let's see how far we can see. So there's 10x and 20x. Now you can't really see what plane it is. But that is really cool. And if you want to see just how far away it is, there we go. That's actually a really good shot as well. I'm going to take a photo of that. Um, so, yeah, you get the idea. That is the full gamut of lenses on the S24 Ultra at 4K at 30 frames per second. If you're wondering what this is, this is a Joby Gorillapod. I'm always asked if it's a gimbal. There's no need for a gimbal with phones like this, but just for the avoidance of doubt, this is just a Joby Gorillapod, which allows me to keep the phone at arm's length. So there is 4K 30 frames per second then. Let's show you 4K 60. All right, 4K 60 then with the rear lenses. Now, nothing new. Google did it with the Pixel 7 Pro year before last. Wow, was it that long ago? The years fly by. Uh, but the Google's Pixel 7 Pro was the first phone that allowed switching of lenses at 4K60 on every lens. I know the OnePlus 9 Pro did it a few years back, but it was the ultra wide and main lens only. If you were going to the telephoto, it would just be cropping from its main lens to get you a digitized version. So it wasn't actually the first to offer full lens switching. But the S24 Ultra will quite happily let you cycle through each different lens with no digital crop in at all. And go all the way back to wherever you were going. Now let's check out dynamic range at 4K 60. Yeah, pretty much no difference to 4K 30. Usually you get a little, slightly less dynamic range at 4K 60 from any of the cameras, but not so much here. It's very, very impressive. And you can take photos as you go along as well. Let's go up to the distance and check out the wind farm. So much more lifelike organic movement from the turbines there up in the distance than you would get at 4K 30. And there's the 20X zoom. So if I keep still, you can even see the sheep up there as well. I can't get any more focus than that, but that's just to give you an idea of the zoom range at 4K 60. Okay, so this is a portrait video from the rear camera. So this allows you to use the main camera or you can then use the 3X camera to get you this really nice looking portrait video. Now Samsung makes it really easy. It's got built-in stabilization and does everything for you. And you kind of know when it's all ready, when it says ready at the top of the screen in the yellow writing. So you can see here, you get a nice blur effect on the subject. I 
which allows you some pretty nifty looking very artistic video again the colors are much softer when using portrait video trying not to disturb this horse too much which is having a quiet munch there that's better not so much against the sun but you get the idea with the portrait video now this is the effect strength so that is on seven and then I can just go all the way to nothing so there's no effect of portrait there and that is on max and there's different options for the portrait video as well so you can see everything is black and white apart from the horse and we have this glitch effect video all of this you can do while you're still recording which really shows off the power of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipset. Absolute monster of a, a chipset. It just flies through everything with this phone. All right, so I'm not just pointing my phone at the road for no reason. There is a really cool feature which has been added to the S24 Ultra and that is AI slow-mo. Now this makes the standard slow-mo completely redundant in my opinion. What AI slow-mo allows you to do is to take any video from any lens at any frame rate and then slow it down to a quarter of its speed as you like. Now it's using a lot of interpolation interpolation however you want to say it but it is such a cool feature that you can just point at anything and slow the video down it's brilliant now you really have to be into your slow motion to really enjoy it but the fact that you can just go into the gallery editor with any video including downloaded videos from another handset or offline or from online said that wrong and then just slow them down in the gallery is proper neat okay so to round out the video then we've got the super steady mode as I said a little bit redundant because the stabilization in this standard video mode is already really good but for completeness I wanted to show you this feature so you can make your own mind up about whether you'd use this or not and also how good this is if you're looking to change this phone from a rival handset so this is, is with the ultra wide lens and this is at 1440p at 60 frames per second so it does do 4k 60. so while it's not what up to 4k uh, i suppose for its intended use maybe you might use it for sport or running or something like that uh, then this is plenty resolution for what you're going to need but the good thing is, is that you can switch to the different viewpoints this year you had to stop recording last year but this year you can actually just cycle through them so you get ultra wide main lens and then a 2x crop so you get plenty of options for the video now bear in mind this is only available on the rear cameras not the selfie but it does look reasonably decent i mean i'm walking here across really uneven ground going downhill as well um, and it's doing a good job of keeping everything nice and steady at least now the dynamic range does suffer a little bit but it's not that bad uh, go all the way up to the ultra wide lens you do miss the transitions when using this mode I've noticed as well it kind of just snaps through each lens as you choose it on the viewfinder but video quality is reasonably decent when using this option. And just for comparison, let's just do sideways movement. This is 1440p at 30 frames per second using the super steady mode. So I'm going to walk in uphill over this boggy marsh. This should smooth everything out nicely. Is the ultra wide let's move to the 
main lens. Now this should be better again, because you're getting optical and electronic image stabilization with the benefit of the more aggressive Super Steady. Now what Super Steady does is it crops in a little bit more and uses the information that is chucked away from each edge of the frame to smoothen out the video. Now the key is looking at the gravity line which is on the screen. So when it goes yellow, you're level. When it's wobbling about white and yellow, it means you're all over the shop like a cheap suit. But the video is staying rock steady. So on that count, it's done its job and done it well. All right, so that's the end then of this walkthrough of all of the video features on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. The crazy thing is this isn't everything that's available. There's also high dynamic range video, 8K video, and also pro video modes to look forward to. I'll be uploading separate videos for high dynamic range and also 8K video. But for now, if you've got any comments or any questions about anything you've seen in the video, then please leave those down in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And don't forget, if you're new around here, then please do consider subscribing so you don't miss more videos coming like this on the channel very, very soon. But for now, this has been my ultimate video test for the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. My name is Dave West, and I will catch you guys later.